to bring it back to the numbers, Ralph, I'm looking at the screen here, Bitcoin trading at 42,401. Uh, it's only off about 5.3% 24 hours. Yeah, it's mainly noise. You get used to this after a while once you've been invested in the crypto space is that, you know, it's an 86 vol asset currently versus the S&P's like 10. Um, so it's eight times as more volatile as the S&P. So a 10% move is just basically like the S&P having a 1% move. So it's not really that much of a that much of an issue. What is interesting is Bitcoin is very much following, we've talked about this before, its pattern from 2013. And Ethereum is following the Bitcoin pattern from 2017. And things like Solana are following the, the Ethereum pattern from 2017. And they all kind of suggest that this might be a decent entry point for a large run up to the end of the year. And that's how I'm thinking of this. Yeah, I'm looking at a calculator here that estimates Bitcoin volatility on a 30 and 60 day basis. Uh, estimated 30 day volatility, 4% daily. Estimated 60 day volatility, 3.7% daily. To your point, noise. Yeah. Yeah. And these things are. These things are noise. We've just had a decent run up. We've been correcting um, for the last few days. You know, we had a sharp move and nobody really knew what the news was. It was probably part of this. Um, and fine, it's, it's kind of normal, I think, but most participants are so used to it. And anybody who's been in for a while, I mean, we, we had a 50% correction already. So like, this is like, bah, throw me a 20% correction, I don't care. Yeah. Talking about news cycle related events having an impact on Bitcoin, you had a really uh, impressive uh, tweet storm thread about the remarks by SEC Chair Gary Gensler a few days ago uh, when he came out with some things that seemed fairly bearish, effectively saying, I'm not sure that cryptocurrency as an asset class is going to be constituted in its current form for a very long time. Uh, you had some interesting insight about what that might suggest for the longer term, bigger picture, forward structure of markets and regulation in this space. I think the battle lines are being drawn. All people who are trained in negotiation skills will set the boundary hard in the most extreme they can. All trade negotiations, everything happens that way. And then what happens is you go, then go to the negotiating table and you're looking for a compromise and you're looking to get over your side of the line. So firstly, there's a couple of battles going on. Gensler has not got the right entirely to to regulate crypto. There's the OCC and the CFTC, and maybe even the Fed themselves who are interested in this. So there is a fight within, within Washington who regulates this. But obviously, if you're the head of the Securities Exchange Council Commission, then you want the word security to be attached to everything, as opposed to currency, because that goes to the OCC, right? So this is politics, for starters. But the question is, is are most cryptocurrencies securities under the definition? And the interview with Michael Saylor that's out on the platform today on Real Vision Crypto, we talk about this and they probably are. And that what freaks everybody out. Oh my God, it's a security. The security thing is a red herring because what does that mean? What it means is to issue things you would have to have more regulatory red tape. It's very costly to do. If it's a security, you can only issue it to certain people.